section 11.2, I'm saying is about rules of sums and then two formulas that I'm going to give you for sums. Now, the book says it's about arithmetic series, sequences and series, and that's true. We're just focusing on one very small part of that, so I've sort of renamed it to focus on what we're going to be talking about. You'll notice there are actually only three homework problems assigned in this problem. So you might, in this section, so you might be tempted to say, oh, it's not a very important section. It's a very important section. Don't say that, okay? Um, you will be using these sums and these rules of sums and these formulas for sums a lot in calculus next semester. All right. So the first rule is the sum rule for sums. And it says this. If I'm taking the sum as i goes from 1 to n, now here it does not matter that my initial index is 1. Okay? Any initial index is okay. So I've got an initial index and I've got a final index. And then here are the terms that I'm adding up. But the terms come in two parts. They have an A part and a B part. Okay? And what the rule says is you can add up all of the A parts first, add up all of the B parts separately, and then add those two results. Now, when it's written in the summation notation, it looks really abstract and like there's got to be something profound going on. This is actually just the rules of arithmetic that you already know and are comfortable working with. What I'm going to do is just work out an example so that we can see that. So let's suppose that I was doing the sum as i goes from 1 to 3 of i plus i squared. Okay. Well, according to this rule, that would be the same as the sum as i goes from 1 to 3 of i plus the sum as i goes from 1 to 3 of i squared. So I'm just going to write out both of these sums. Okay. So on the left-hand side, my index is going from 1 to 3. <laughs> and each of my terms is going to have two parts. So I'm just going to write that in parentheses. <laughs> so when my index is 1, I'm getting 1 plus 1 squared. 1 plus 1. <laughs> plus, when my index is 2, we're going to get 2 plus 2 squared, which is 4. Plus, when our index is 3, we'll get 3 plus 3 squared, which is 9. So, this is what the left-hand side looks like. Now, on the right-hand side, I'm adding together two sums. So, for this sum, my index goes from 1 to 3. We're going to have 1 plus 2 plus 3. The term here is our index. For this sum, the index goes from 1 to 3. When the index is 1, 1 squared is 1. Plus when the index is 2, 2 squared is 4. Plus when the index is 3, 3 squared is 9. Okay. So either way, I'm adding up the same 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The same six numbers. They're just arranged in a different order and grouped differently. So we actually call that, it's the commutative property when you change the order of things, and it's the associative property when you change how the parentheses group the terms. But basically, in plain English, we're just saying, hey, when I'm just doing a bunch of addition, the order in which I add the terms doesn't matter, and I can group the terms in groups with parentheses however I want to. And that's what this rule basically says. Now, if we're actually evaluating this, we would actually have to do the arithmetic. So let's see, that's 2 plus 6 is going to be 8, plus 12, this would be 20. And I should get 20 either way I do it. Okay. So this just illustrates why this property works. So if the terms have two parts, you can break it up, you can add up all the A parts, add up all the B parts, and then add the results. Okay, that's our first rule. <laughs> 